Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing a bit different of a deck per se. Usually I don't play this type of decks, but it's not gonna be like a mind deck. It's gonna be actually a deck from a suggestion by a, a fan or should I say uh, a fellow friend and a Discord uh, server member at her. Uh, shout out to you, buddy. We're gonna be playing his uh, basically uh, Dark Knight deck uh, with Funking and Runners. Try to get some cheesy wins and dominate a ladder. So uh, we're gonna start strong as my opponent kinda play some troops that facilitate our push. And then my opponent plays Steelhammer with for the reason I pretty much cannot explain. I'm gonna actually apply some pressure using his steel hammer as his slingshot once again to facilitate my push. He's gonna get a very nice cleanup with a phone heart. And I don't think I wanna commit uh, way more mana because in a grand scheme of things, uh, I've spent uh, seven mana on this uh, trade and he spent 10, so it's definitely better for me. Uh, which means I can be basically play Ghost for free and anything he plays for that I'm gonna just uh, counter with my troops and there we go he's gonna be playing a uh, Bomberman so I'm gonna just play a Fallen King on that and if he wants to protect this Bomberman it's gonna be definitely costly because like I've said this Ghost was basically played for free so at this point he is uh, uh, he, he's basically struggling for the mana and there we go. I've just got so many troops at the bridge Ready to just crush him. I'm gonna add runners for a good measures G Get a madness so my troops get faster deal more damage and since my opponent is starting for a mana as well That's gonna be a three star victory. So that's gonna be very easy game number one. Let's jump to the game number two and the second game of this video will be against Sigma, who's gonna be having a zero medals, yet he drops a Dark Knight in the back, so at least we know he's not gonna be playing some kind of variation of a default deck, which is already very nice to see. Right now I'm gonna play Font King, it's a very nice interaction to know, since a uh, Font King should be able to counter a Dark Knight for a... Uh, for a plus uh, 2 mana trade, I had to add go since he added madness and I don't like uh, learn by heart interactions with madness so I wasn't sure that this trade was still going in my favor. My opponent will be playing a T-Rex which will some damage but uh, in this deck you pretty much uh, value mana trades uh, rather than damage trades so basically if you can get one push and one push that will bring you to the victory it's uh, definitely everything you want uh, in life my opponent will spend a lot of mana on countering my dark knight obviously i think he's gonna actually get away with this interaction uh, so yeah that was a definitely bad dark knight on my end and we're gonna have to just reset with a Fawn King uh, like previously. I'm gonna get obviously a good trade here and I think I actually want to protect my Fawn King with a Twins. Usually it's the other way around since most of the time it's gonna be uh, your uh, support troops trying to protect your win conditions. But in this uh, case I think it was absolutely justifiable that I've played it other way around since I wanted to preserve my already uh, low health uh, Fawn King uh, on the board a bit longer. It's gonna be playing a Dark Knight, which right now is definitely a good, uh, uh, good thing for me, since uh, right now I can just play Devils. I think I'm gonna play Fawn King on this Dark Knight, even though I could play Dark Knight myself and to take a better trade. I think this way around it's gonna be a bit better, because right now I get a Dark Knight uh, uh, with more health and a Fawn King will go behind anyway. So right now I'm gonna actually get my twins on the tower, they connect, they deal a lot of damage and I think, yeah, there we go, that's gonna be a tower down, very cool to see. I'm gonna play Ghost on this and hope basically that um, all my opponent's devils die. Unfortunately, one survives, so that's gonna be a more tough defense than I anticipated it, but Fawn King should be enough, ju just barely enough to hold it uh, in. So I'm gonna just play Dark Knight against this T-Rex. I don't see a reason why I shouldn't. I'm gonna play Devils behind this Dark Knight and right now he should be playing a Dark Knight on my Dark Knight so I'm gonna just play 
runners with madness and that's gonna be pretty much a wrap on this game. He actually was pretty patient and was waiting for these runners, but like, the game was already over, so uh, it really didn't matter what we would play. GG's, nice play, let's jump to game number 3. Alright, and in next matchup we're gonna get uh, Lore Lala. Uh, I hope I pronounced it correctly. A Malpont will be actually very aggressive with Bone Blasters and frankly every single troop in the game, which means that uh, we're gonna be able to just set up our Dream Push. So, uh, one thing that you actually have to know about this deck is that uh, you kinda actually have some optimal steps setups that you want to like execute as uh, commonly in the game as possible because uh, they are just synergizing too, uh, so well. One of them is uh, Dark Knight and Funking and the reason is, I mean the reason is very simple, uh, basically Dark Knight has a lot of HP and a splash damage and uh, Funking deals a lot of damage uh, capitalizing on Dark Knight surviving for a very long time so actually that's gonna be way easier and faster 3 star than I anticipated let's jump to game number 4 and I think since we're going so fast we're gonna be getting a game number 6 in today's video and next game will be against Rezer with 800 mels which means that we're entering the stage of serious opponents no goofing around this time, but I wasn't goofing around in the first place. Only serious gaming on this channel. We're gonna get a bit of a... Uh, uh, I would say underwhelming trades at the beginning of the game, but nothing uh, too crazy so far. Like I've said, if you can set up a Dark Knight with a Fawn King, you definitely should. My opponent will be actually trying to uh, counter it, and if I... Uh, if I get uh, like fast enough uh, madness, I think if I play Blitz, that's gonna be a connection and that's exactly what we want to see. My opponent will be playing once again a uh, Skeleton Keck, which is definitely a good pressure uh, method. Right now he, okay, he won't be having a mana for a Necromancer and that's, uh, that's gonna be basically it. Now we know what he's playing, he's gonna be playing a a Viking bird spam, but with skeleton heck for some reason. Uh, I don't know. You may be, uh, you may ask him, why is he playing that? Uh, for now, I'm gonna just play Funking, just counter his ghost. I probably should have played it uh, further back down the lane, just to get it charged faster. Opponent will be playing a uh, Viking, which is definitely a good move for us because we're gonna just pressure on the opposite side with twins. He's gonna get a counter with a uh, thief, but it's absolutely fine for us. We're gonna play runners on uh, his uh, necromancer and basically get a counter to this viking, I hope at least. There we go. Obviously not like the perfect uh, case scenario because you would love to get devils on uh, his dark knight. But at the same time, not too bad, not too shabby. He's gonna be playing piercing archers, so okay. Uh, that's that was definitely not a thing that I wanted to play But it's 100% not the worst outcome we could have gotten I'm gonna play actually twins and play madness on this just to get these twins to connect This Viking will be dead and that was basically the goal of this attack Usually you don't want to be that aggressive, but since we get the Viking uh, down it was definitely a good call I'm gonna play Blitz on these skeletons. I missed two, which is actually very embarrassing since I should be uh, knowing this interaction. I'm gonna play Dark Knight here. I think there's no reason uh, not to play it. And right now, we basically have to kind of go for it because, yeah, my opponent uh, cannot uh, cross the bridge with his, uh, with his Viking. I mean, uh, he can cross the bridge with uh, Viking uh, with this amount of health because it won't do anything, but like if he gets ever a very healthy Viking on our side of the map, it's gonna be very bad news. So I'm gonna play a Dark Knight here just to kite his fifth. And right now we're gonna, li like, uh, like I've said before, get our perfect setup. We're gonna get some madness. Uh, his Viking actually targets uh, the twins, which uh, turns out to be uh, very beneficial for us. 
since right now we can basically just go in Dark Knight splashes the Necromancer and that's gonna be GG's nice plate since his Viking disappeared way too early and we get it up. GG's nice plate, we're gonna jump to the game number 4. Looks like we're gonna get one more game against Reezer who instantly switches deck into something else and I presume he's gonna be playing a 2.6 Super Ape Cycle uh, looking at least at his cards so... Uh, Obviously it can be something different, that's why I'm not committing 100% yet. I'm gonna play actually Dark Knight here because I don't see a reason why we shouldn't commit. I'm gonna play Twins here because uh, they definitely skip the cannon. And uh, yeah, my opponent uh, will have to commit something on them. I'm gonna play Blitz here. I'm gonna play some Madness just to get a lot of damage on his tower. If not the tower at all. So yeah, we're not gonna get a tower, but it was definitely a brilliant start for us. He was definitely too aggressive with his first explorer. He should be like more passive, trying to defend on his side of the board and uh, not like just go with the uh, explorer and gunner basically first play. We're gonna play runners on the super a because he still has to react to them. Obviously it shouldn't be like too difficult for him, but still we take a... Uh, 6 for 7 trade, which is definitely beneficial for us. I could have just pressured him, but I don't think it would be like super beneficial for us. It looks like my opponent is up in mana since he's second card, or at least he wants us to mm, play anything at all. So we're gonna play Dark Knight, actually, I think that's gonna be a good play. If he pressures us with Super Ape on the opposite side, I'm gonna just play Devils. That's not a biggie. I'm gonna play actually a phone king on uh, this side no matter what just to uh, create some pressure and like i've said some synergies just are very strong in this deck and uh, dark knight phone king is uh, one of them my twins will once again uh, skip uh, the cannon he should be like more patient with his cannons if he ever wants to like defend the twins and if he doesn't well he can just pre-play the cannons like this so we're gonna just play Ghost in the back. I'm gonna play Runners once again into his Super A because he pretty much gives me no reason not to. Runners coming down the lane. I'm gonna actually play a Dark Knight in the uh, middle because why not? I'm gonna play Madness on every uh, single troop that I own. Runners are on the Viking Tower and he actually owned a Lightning. So that was supposed to be the surprise card and definitely a good one because if you can survive with Super Ape uh, to the double mana, you can pretty much get a value with uh, Lightning against my Runners, against my Fawn King, sometimes against my Dark Knight. Uh, many plays that you can make, but uh, first of all, you have to have your defense locked. So that wasn't definitely the matchup Reezer was looking for. We're gonna take the dub and jump to the last game of today's video. And we're gonna get actually one more game against him this time. He's playing uh, probably Viking Bridgestorm since he played a Piercing Archer first play. I wouldn't be surprised, but he spent a lot of mana conjuring this, uh, conjuring his attack. So we're gonna just counterplay it uh, with our troops and <laughs> holy cow, that escalated quickly. We basically uh, have killed uh, his all, uh, all tower. Uh, We've killed his all defending troops, and I'm pretty sure we are up mana against a ver against a very bad matchup. So uh, definitely a good start. If I were to see one, I'm gonna play Devils in the back. I think it's the most flexible move. Now he plays Dark Knight in the back. I think it's a prime opportunity for us to just play a Dark Knight on the opposite side because obviously Viking is the best counter uh, to uh, the Dark Knight thus far. We're gonna actually go for a base trade. I don't think there is uh, anything wrong with that because I don't think he can physically like hold uh, our push and yeah, that's gonna be a good game. I don't think uh, there was anything we could have done better in this situation and that's gonna be actually a very anticlimactic uh, game number five but at least uh, I've proven myself that uh, Reezer cannot beat me. Uh, 
no matter what he plays. So yeah, that's gonna be the uh, end of today's video. We've got some games against good players with this very wacky decks. Once again, shout out to Ed Hair for suggesting it. It definitely was fun to play. I don't think it's like viable competitively, but you definitely can still make some plays and win some cheesy games. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video. And if you enjoyed my content, uh, definitely consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you aren't already because I post a Boom Arena content every single day and you can definitely learn something from it. I post a gameplay so you can just uh, try to uh, see what uh, calls I'm doing with a very popular and less popular decks like uh, in this video and you can implement uh, these plays in your own gameplay. So yeah, that's gonna be it once again. Thank you for watching and I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.